Hello, members of St. Mark's, those who visit with us, and those who follow Christ. Here's my thoughts on the devotions I have for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The surrendered life is what this might be called, or to be a Christian, to have Christ live within us. This uh, based on Galatians 2.20, and it's lifted out in this context to, I have been crucified with Christ. Um, Christ was crucified. He died. So have we died? And what does that mean literally for us in our natural born days? Well, to become one with Jesus Christ, a person must be willing not only to give up sin, but also surrender his whole way of looking at things. As many of you know me in Bible studies and my comments out loud in sermons that Keith kind of either cringes at or follows at, it's a different way of looking at things or understanding things from Christ's point of view. Being born again by the Spirit of God means that we must first be willing to let go before we can grasp anything else. The first thing we must surrender is all our pretense and deceit. It's actually who I am, my natural life and my personal desires and willingness, my whatever it is, morals and ethical standards that I humanly create, and I willingly and rational mind create. What our Lord wants us to pre present to Him is not our goodness, really. I mean, it's not our honesty or our efforts to do better. I mean, those are all do-good things, but real solid sin. Actually, that is all He can take from us. And what He wants to give us in exchange for that is real solid righteousness right being right living right mindedness but we must surrender all pretense that we are anything that i am somebody that i'm a good christian that i'm a leader i'm a prophet um whatever we think i can have the spiritual spiritual gifts that we test ourselves for and we in our natural lives and rationale come to come up with and we need to give up all of our claims, even being worthy of God's consideration. We were born into sin under Adam and Eve of the original disobedience, the original sin. We didn't follow God. We didn't do what He asked us. He didn't do what He told us. So we have to give up that will, so to speak, strong will. Once we have done that, the Spirit of God will show us what we need to surrender next. And it's more than one step. It keeps going on day by day, hour by hour, month by month, year by year. And when you get older, it seems like sometimes you've missed those steps. So, along each of this step of this process, are we willing to sur surrender or grasp on all that we possess or desire and everything else in our lives? Or are we ready to identify with the death of Jesus Christ, the death of our will, to surrender to His will, to do His will, to become a Christian. Will we suffer a sharp, painful disillusionment before we fully surrender? Well, yes, I have, probably several times, because I'm pretty prideful. I'm pretty stiff-necked. I'm pretty smart, have some common sense, read, educate myself as best I can, and listen to others to see what I can pick out of their wisdom and things like that. But should I have been doing that? Or listening to Christ and the Holy Spirit and learning His, God's wisdom. I don't know. We will feel sharp disillusionment at time. It's like we're not getting what we want. We have prayers and we don't hear from God. We don't see His natural manifestation of the answers to our prayers. Or were our prayers right? There's doubt. Whoa, there's a saying I like. To hear and I've heard many times in my devotions if you doubt don't if you doubt God wants you to do that you probably shouldn't do it if you doubt that you should get that for yourself you probably shouldn't do it on the other hand how to look at that bringing that into perspective do we look at it from Christ's point of view I mean if I get that new car or if I get that new fishing rod or if I get you know whatever a new frisbee to play with the grandkids. I mean, whatever it is, is that going to really show the love of Christ, His face and His will to other people? 
are we teaching them how to live like Christ, like Christ, like being a Christian, having Christ in us? These are all questions. These are all huge, monumental decisions we must make on a continuous basis. They say with practice makes perfect. Well, practicing to be Christ will make you a perfect Christian. Yeah, I could. I mean, that's outside of my thinking. I won't already say no. But if he lives in us, then we can be him. That is just a tremendous amount of rationale that I have to throw out the window. And faith to believe that it would actually come true. Because I don't think any of you would say, like, if I met you and said, I'm Christ today. Would you believe me? Could you see? Could you see Christ in me? Oh, I definitely hope so. And keep the devotion up that that will happen. <sighs> it's not the terribly offensive sins of the flesh that shock Christ, but the awful nature of the pride of their own hearts opposing Jesus Christ. And these are words of Oswald Chamber. Well, if I reflect back on that, every time I want something, and when I yell at Christ, if I get angry at Christ, I don't know if you've done that. I have. It's just my terrible pride and human selfishness that come back to haunt me, that gets thrown in my face. My favorite saying is, look in the mirror. When someone confronts me or the challenge is there, it's like, look in the mirror. And what do you see? It's it's terrible. It's humiliating. It's damning in many ways. Without the faith and love and grace of Christ given to us freely in his death. So if you're at, faced with the question of whether or not to surrender, make a determination to go on through the crisis, the issue, the thought, the desire, the pride, the prideful need for vengeance or revenge or get even with or have more than or I'm better than you. I mean, whatever it is, you have to go through that and think of it with him in your heart and what his thoughts will be. Once you do that and repeatedly do that, God will equip you to do all things that he requires of you. So you will be doing his will and in doing his will, you will look like Christ. And in that, you will be Christian. So many thoughts and so many things to take into consideration there. How do I adjust my thinking? How do I step back from who I am and evaluate what it's doing to others? And in, in a basic point for the human side of me to follow Christ. If I step back and look at my actions, how I sound, how I'm acting, and what I'm doing, Am I displaying Christ or do people know me as a Christian that I follow him and I can act like a punk? I can act like a just more polite term. I can be a goober, you know, in whatever situation, whatever family relation I'm in, whatever personal friendship I have in, in a marriage, anything. What do I look like and what appears to others? I am a Christian. I go to church. I worship with you. I pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ, His Son, and ask for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Am I truly doing that, or am I doing that for my own desires and my own betterment, my own prestige of how I view myself? Nah, throw that out the window. It should be for Christ and who He is. So join me in prayer, please. Lord Heavenly Father, I pray that the discernment and the wisdom and your mercies that you grant us and show us that we can listen to, we can see, and we can mimic, and then we can perpetrate it through our brothers and sisters, and not only those that follow you, but to all others that were to take your message, your gospel, your love, and your grace too. I ask this power and wisdom and understanding through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ to the Father in heaven. Amen.